Good morning, Modern Setters. I got the fire going in the outdoor kitchen. Getting it warmed up in here so we can put the strapping on the walls and get ready for the sheathing. I haven't heard from the company yet. I don't hear from them shortly. I'll have to give them a call and find out if they're going to be delivering it or not today. Fingers crossed. I'm hoping to start it tomorrow. And if we do, we should be able to finish it all tomorrow. Snack crackle and popping. I like the sounds of that. I went ahead and I got all the strapping cut for the rest of the walls. And I'll show you what I did for our, I'm going to call it the pocket wall. So down in the lower part of the wall, there's not going to be any window hidden inside. So what I did is I took a 2x4, figured out the spacing, got it up against there, and then we can secure it nice and strongly up. I'm not putting any strapping here. We're not going to need to. The sheathing is going to be fine. We'll have it secured up high. There'll be a 4 foot section with no screws in it. And then the lower area will be secured nicely. I got it spaced off the wall. And then I put a spacer in the center so it's nice and solid. All right, let's see if we can get this figured out and get it to work the way we want it to work. I'm just using rough sawn lumber, about four inches wide for my strapping. That's what we have. And I got some four inch long drywall screws. Hope they don't come out the other side. Better go check. Survey says one of the screws started poking out. And the other one must be up in here, so we are good. We'll keep an eye on it. If we have to, we can switch to some shorter screws. Now, if this was a house, and you were trying to get the best insulating factor, this wouldn't be the best way to do the strapping over the insulation. Okay, those four inch screws are too long. Luckily, I picked up some three inch screws the other day. And we're gonna switch over to them. Now, one of the things that's dictating where I'm putting my strapping on the inside is where I have the strapping on the outside of the building. I wanna make sure it's sitting on top of another piece of strapping. So we're snugging it up to it, but we're not going too tight to squish the insulation all the way. We're squishing it some and that it will take away from the R factor, the insulating property of the insulation. But it's an outdoor kitchen. This kitchen is better insulated than the first house me and Gina had. When we bought our first house, there was no insulation in it. Oh, that first winter was a cold winter, and we moved in either in December or January. We didn't get warm at all that winter, but we had a huge oil bill. I remember that. Yep, that first winter, 
we'd have the furnace running full blast, and we were lucky if the house would stay 60 degrees. Whew, that was one cold winter. Whew, that fire hasn't been going that long, but I'll tell you what, I'm already getting hot. It sure is nice in here. They'll never forget that winter, but those are the kind of struggles that make you appreciate what you get when you get it. It's one of those things you kind of got to pay so you appreciate what you get later on in life. If everything was just handed to all of us, we wouldn't appreciate anything. Now comes the fun part, moving everything around so we can work in another area. We'll get this bench smooth, then we can set up and get this back wall done, and then we'll just keep working our way around the kitchen. <clears throat> It's not very nice out right now. It just started raining. Once we get past working behind the stove, it'll go a lot nicer. It's warm, nice and warm right here. I like it. Not feeling any drafts. That's a good sign. have to get one of those non-electric fans you put on the wood stoves and they blow. They stop blowing when the... I don't know how they work. Alright, let's move on to the next section now. I think I settled in on four pieces of strapping. Yesterday when I laid it out in my head, I figured five. But I have to go on top of where there's already another piece of strapping. And the next, if I put five strappings in, the other one would be right here and right in the middle. And it's not gonna serve any purpose. We don't need that much. The sheathing we're putting up isn't gonna weigh that much. That's the biggest hint I'll give you today. Oh, sorry about that. FedEx showed up. They brought the beef bung. Yeah, that's right, beef bung. We're going to be stuffing our copa inside of some beef bung so we can hang it up and let it age. Oh, so that video will be coming shortly. One of the reasons we need to finish up the kitchen. Once the kitchen's done, I can move on and start building our root cellar so we'll have a place to air dry our copa and our prosciutto. So that's the next project after we finish this one. Me and Gino are just in the basement figuring out where we're going to put the root cellar. We're going to build it, insulate it, and then we'll sheet the inside of it. We're going to do wood on the inside of that. Um, and then we're not going to go too nuts with finishing up. We've got some other projects we want to get done too. 
but I need to get that project done next so I have a place to hang the copa and prosciutto. And then I can move on to some projects that Gina would like to see get worked on. We're not even done with today's project, and I'm already looking forward to tomorrow of what the kitchen's gonna look like at the end of the day. Oh, it's gonna look so nice in here, it's gonna look so different. I'm gonna be happy, I hope Gina's happy, and I think all the modern steaders will like the look. And then we can get it set back up in here, we can start using it again. Next time we have to butcher chickens when it's like 22 degrees out, the outdoor kitchen will be insulated and will be a lot warmer in here. For uh, any of our next classes, we'll have a nice place to hang out in. It was nice before, but now it'll be insulated, blocked from the wind. Yep, it's going to be good. change my battery. Alright, now we got a fresh battery. Last piece of strapping. Alright. I am excited to have the strapping up. Now we can move on to the next phase. Oh, it looks like they're here with our delivery of sheathing. Better go out and receive that. What was it? I was over here before you. We were just building this one here. Yeah. 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 Yeah, late spring. We won't end the video right there, but I can't point the camera over in that direction. Then you'll know what we've got to put on the inside of the outdoor kitchen. You'll have to come back and watch tomorrow's video to find out what we're putting up. Let's go feed the pigs. Hello, girls. How we doing? We gotta get you some more hay in there. It's looking pretty muddy. I gotta leave the camera outside the pen. I don't wanna get the camera all muddy. Oh, I bet you'll love that. Yum o. That's delicious. I've been getting a bunch of comments lately like, how can you raise your pigs and treat them like pets? and then harvest them and eat them. What's the opposite to that answer? I'm gonna do a blog post on this topic, so if you wanna come over and read that, I'll put a link here and in the description down below. Well, this is where we're gonna to end today's video. Pigs eating, they're in hog heaven. <laughs>